welcome viewers in this video we will see the generated emf that is the emf equation of a dc generator subscribe this channel for more electrical videos and notification the soft copy of this material available in the drive the link is given in the description box now we'll go to the topic emf equation of a generator first we'll see the what are the parameters available the pi is the flux per pole the unit is Weber flux per pole the Z is nothing but total number of armature conductors so that is nothing but number of slots into number of conductors per slot right so this uh, number of conductor per slot multiplied by number of conductors will give the total conductors in your armature con armature conductor P is the number of generator poles so during the manufacturing itself this number of poles will be decided a is the number of parallel path available in the armature this parallel path refer the depends upon the winding either wave winding or lab winding based on that we can decide the number of parallel path n is the armature rotation in revolution per minute rps the speed of the speed of the dc generator is given by n armature rotation that is the unit is revolution per minute so the e is the emf induced in any parallel path in a armature so the emf is is given for a parallel path in a armature so these are all the various notations available now we'll go to the emf generates generation so the generated emf equal to emf generated in any one of the parallel path so now we consider the parallel path first the emf generated in parallel path the average emf generated per conductor is nothing but d pi by dt the average generated is d pi by rate of change of flux there we consider n equal to 1 normally it is n d pi by dt <coughs> here we consider n equal to 1 so d pi by dt now we'll find what is the value of d pi and what is the value of dt what is the flux available rate of change of flux and what is the time taken so that if you find these two parameter we can easily identify the emf generated average emf generated now flux cut per conductor in one revolution so there is a rate of change of flux then only the emf will be induced so what is the flux cut flux rate of change of flux is d pi equal to pi into p the flux available and number of poles available in the generator so pi into p will give the how much of flux cut per conductor in one revolution so that it is pi into p weber the number of revolution per second equal to n divided by 60 this n is the number of revolution per minute in order to convert into second it is divided by 60 so the time taken for one revolution is dt equal to 60 divided by n seconds so the number of taken time taken is 60 by n so within a one revolution there are 60 by n seconds it will take the time of 60 by n seconds now we got the value of d pi as well as dt so d pi by dt will give the generated emf so according to the faraday's law faraday's law of electromagnetic induction emf generated per conductor equal to d pi by dt the d pi what we calculated is pi into p flux into pole divided by the time taken 60 by n so this n will go to the numerator so pi p n divided by 60 voltage so the generated emf equal to pi p n divided by 60 voltage so this emf depends upon what is the flux available in the generator number of poles then speed of the generator divided by 60 now we'll go to the parallel path so this is for emf generated per conductor now we'll go for emf generated per path that is based on the winding type of winding either wave winding or lab winding now we'll see this one by one first consider a simplex wave winding wave winding generator the winding type is wave winding so in case of wave winding the number of parallel path equal to 2 always for wave winding the number of parallel path will be 2 so that number of conductor in one path is z divided by 2 that is connected in series so only two parallel paths available 
So number of conductor in a path is Z divided by 2. So EMF generated per path is nothing but pi Pn divided by 60 into Z by 2. So earlier we calculated EMF generated per conductor. Suppose if we want to find EMF generated per path means, so this value is the EMF generated per conductor. Within that we are multiplying the number of conductor in a path only in one path. So pi p n divided by 60 into z by 2. So that it is nothing but pi n p pi z p n divided by 120 voltage. This is for a wave winded generated pi z p n divided by 120. Now we will go to the lab binding. In case of lab binding the number of parallel path equal to number of poles. Number of parallel path equal to p. The how many poles are available that much number of parallel path will be available. So the number of conductor in series in one path is z by p. In previous case we taken z by 2. Now it is z by p. The number of parallel path is equal to number of poles. So that EMF generated per path is pi p n divided by 60 into z by p. Right? So this is the EMF generated per conductor. So this is the EMF generated per path by multiplying number of conductors. Right? So this the p p got cancelled, number of poles got cancelled. So pi z n divided by 60 voltage. So this expression is applicable for wave and lab, lab binding. Right? So in general either lab binding or wave binding generally one equation is available eg equal to pi n z divided by 60 into p by a voltage right so here this p the a number of path in case of simplex wave winding a equal to 2 we can substitute a equal to 2 always it is 2 in case of lab winding a is nothing but number of poles so that a equal to 2 for wave winding a equal to P number of poles in case of wave end, in case of lab ending. So we can use this. This is the general equation for EMF generated for both lab ending or wave ending. Accordingly, we can substitute the number of parallel path. So pi n z divided by 60 into P by A voltage. So this is a general equation. It is applicable for both wave ending as well as lab ending. Then we go, we will go with the angular velocity, the same the uh, EMF generated EMF is expressed in terms of a angular velocity. For that this 2 pi is multiplied and divided. So already we have this n by 60 is already available, pi z p by a is available. So in order to get the angular velocity omega, omega is nothing but 2 pi n divided by 60. In order to bring this order we are multiply by 2 pi and divide by 2 pi so that the originality will not change so the remaining terms are as it is available pi z p by a all are available so this 2 pi n can be replaced by omega that is nothing but angular velocity 2 pi n divided by 60 is nothing but a angular velocity then remaining terms are available this 2 pi available this pi z p by a so this equation is also the generated EMF in a DC generator it is given in terms of velocity in a problem or if you will solving the problem if a angular velocity is available we can use this formula omega pi z divided by 2 pi into p by a right so this is the general equation for either lab binding or wave binding we can use this so this equation applicable when the angular velocity is given so in this video we discuss the generated EMF of a DC generator for both lab, lab binding as well as wave winding and also one more expression for including the angular velocity. So subscribe this channel for more videos related to the electrical topic and soft copy of this material is available in the drive. The drive link is given in the description box. Thank you.